Ever since the first COVID lockdown, I've always followed the rules. In that time, the British people have made heart-wrenching sacrifices. People were left desperately lonely. They were separated from family and friends. Tragically, many were unable to see dying loved ones. This was a collective sacrifice. People were entitled to expect that politicians would follow the same rules as everyone else. When my mother-in-law passed away suddenly just before the lockdown, my wife and I were unable to provide her father with the support we wanted to afterwards because we followed the rules. Barely a day has passed where we haven't agonised over that decision, but we did it because we followed the rules. We all found the rules frustrating at times, and I'm no exception to that. I had to isolate six times during COVID, pulling me away from my work and the things that I love. But I did it because we followed the rules. The idea that I would then casually break those rules is wrong. And frankly, I don't believe those accusing me believe it themselves. They are just trying to feed cynicism, to get the public to believe all politicians are the same. I'm here to say that they're not. I believe in honour, integrity, and the principle that those who make the laws must follow them. And I believe that politicians who undermine that principle undermine trust in politics, undermine our democracy, and undermine Britain. I'm absolutely clear that no laws were broken. They were followed at all times. I simply had something to eat while working late in the evening, as any politician would do days before an election. But if the police decide to issue me with a fixed penalty notice, I would, of course, do the right thing and step down. This matters. It matters because the British public deserve politicians who think the rules apply to them. They deserve politicians who hold themselves to the highest standards. And they deserve politicians who put the country first rather than themselves. They will always, always get that from me. Thank you. I'll now take questions. I think, Beth, we've agreed you'll go first. Yes, thank you. Um, uh, Piers Stormer, um, when it was announced on Friday that you were going to be investigated by the police, it was pretty clear to everyone that should you be issued a fixed penalty notice, or even actually, you haven't said this, but be found in breach of lockdown regulations, that given what you've said about the Prime Minister, you'd have no option but to resign. So what, my first question is, why did it take you so long to arrive at that position? Is it because you were aware of the huge gamble that you're taking and you were frightened by that? Beth, no rules were broken. I've been absolutely clear about that from start to finish. Um, and I've set out today the in principle position that I believe in, unlike those at Downing Street, I don't think those that make the laws can then simply breach them um, and not uh, take action. I believe that if you've made a law, you should respect the law, and if you're found to be in breach of it, you should step down. And that's what I've set out clearly this afternoon. Do you know it's a gamble for you, though? Beth, this is a matter of principle and honour for me. It's about who I am, what I stand for. And I stand for honour and integrity, and the belief that uh, politics is a force for good, and we shouldn't all be dragged down by this cynical belief that all politicians are the same. And I'm here to make it clear that I am not the same. We've seen 50 fines in Downing Street. We've seen a prime minister who won't step down. We are not all the same. I am different, and I've set out today how I'm different. Just one, uh, I just want one more, and then I promise <laughs> I'll hand over. On January the 31st, you put out a tweet. You said, honesty and decency matter. Do you think that was the own lockdown rules, he needs to do the decent thing and resign. 
So you said then that the Prime Minister should resign because he was under criminal investigation, which you now are as well. Isn't it rather hypocritical that you said that of him, but you're not prepared to resign right now? What, what do you say to people that say you're hypocritical? Well, Beth, I've set out my position very clearly. I've taken a very different course to the Prime Minister, of course, um, did break the laws and then didn't resign. I'm setting out a very different course. Um, I have different principles to the Prime Minister, uh, and I think it's very important that the public see that not all politicians are the same. I'm very different to the Prime Minister in this regard in terms of the principle, the honour, and the integrity of the office that I hold. Uh, I think we're going to see Ben, you. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Sakir. Um, you portrayed yourself again today as a politician of integrity. You were a former director, too, of public prosecutions. How embarrassed are you, angry are you, that your career as Labour leader now hangs on the outcome of a police investigation? Ben, first and foremost, no rules were broken. I don't actually believe that those that are accusing me believe rules were broken. They are trying to simply drag all politicians into a place where the public think we're all the same. For me, this is an in principle position. Um, no rules were broken. I'm absolutely clear about that. But in the event that I'm wrong about that and I get a fixed penalty notice, I'll do the right thing and step down. Do you think that there are people within the Labour Party trying to undermine you with this? Ben, this is my decision about what is the right thing to do in these circumstances. No rules were broken. I've said that um, with great clarity. Um, but this is about me. It's about what I believe in in politics. It's about integrity. Um, and I believe in integrity. And integrity requires me uh, to take the course of action I've set out here if, in the event, I get a fixed penalty notice. Uh, Libby. Do you now accept, though, that you've jumped the gun in calling for the Prime Minister's resignation and the Chancellor's resignation when they were only under investigation for breaking the rules? Well, Libby, I'm setting out... Um, my position in relation to uh, the events of the last few days. The Prime Minister has chosen not to resign, notwithstanding that not only has he broken the law that he made, but 50 fines have been imposed in relation to the workplace that he is responsible for. Um, that is his choice, but it's very important that the public don't think that all politicians are the same, and that is why I've set out my position um, in terms of honour and integrity. But he hadn't been found guilty at the time you called for him to quit. That was playing politics, wasn't it? Well, Libby, was bad politics. Well, Libby, he's, he's been found um, guilty. He's been found to be in breach of the law. I think over 50 fines now in relation to Downing Street. Um, and the Prime Minister has not stepped down. He and others in his party want the public to believe that we're all the same, that we will all act in that way. I'm here to make clear that is not the case. Thank you all very much. Well, well, Beth, the, 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 the penalty... Firstly, I haven't done anything that bre breaks the rules. Um, the penalty for a, for a COVID breach is a fixed penalty notice. That, that, that's a matter of law, um, and I've set out what the position is in relation to that. Thank you very much.